fruit flies are entirely beautiful. If you look at them under the microscope, um, look at their eyes. They're, you know, all different colors. They're, they're beautiful. This is probably the most exciting time to be doing research. The technological advancements that are open to us as part of that were generated as part of the effort to understand the human genome are, are mind-boggling. We are now at a time when we can conceive of having every individual on the planet with a complete DNA sequence. The, the work that we do on flies is relevant um, to human biology, human medicine, and also um, animal biology and, um, and, and agriculture. I took genetics for the first time as a course when I was in grade 10. And just the whole idea of a science that was both very quantitative and random um, just did it for me. I, I really love the whole idea that you could understand the principles, but you could never quite totally predict what the consequences would be. When I went to Dalhousie University, um, which is where I did my undergraduate degree, the, the first thing I did was say, I, I want to do genetics and I'm going to sign up for every single genetics or genetics-like course there is. And um, I realized that I had to learn statistics at the same time, so I, I, I minored in, in stats and that was that. So my husband Robert Anholt and I work together a lot on many different projects. Uh, Robert is the molecular biologist of the of the team, and I'm the one that understands the genetic crosses the, and the statistical analyses. So together we make a, a very good team. In fact, people think that Robert and I met because we're both scientists, but the truth is we, we met through the horses. We do carriage driving as a hobby, and I also like to dabble in dressage riding. I haven't spoken about it before, but one of Robert's projects actually is um, the genetics of glaucoma. So we've collaborated and we've actually made a fly model of glaucoma, which as you know is one of the um, most prevalent eye diseases in, in, in the world. We found that these same genes that we identified by going from human to fly and back to human actually were associated with um, incidence of glaucoma in two different populations. Stripped down to the essence, the genes do sometimes the same job. And so that if you can understand the details of the fly system, one can often transport that knowledge or export that knowledge to humans. So, for example, some of the traits that we study are um, lifespan, aggression, sleep. We also look at alcohol sensitivity. The flies, like people, get very happy when they're first exposed to ethanol, dance around, and then they fall over. Um, in scientific jargon, lose postural control, i.e. fall over dead drunk, and fall to the bottom of the tube. You can collect them every minute, and some strains are get drunk immediately. Others can hang out for 20 minutes or, or more without falling over. So we're trying to find out what the genetic basis of, of that behavior is. The bell tower at NC State has actually been lit three times for me. And the first time was the American Academy of Arts and Science, the second was the Royal Society, and the third and most recent was the National Academy of Sciences. The Royal Society was, was one of the, the major awards that I'm still feeling humbled about signing the, the big charter book A lot of science is, is, is literally about communication on so many levels. The biggest thing for a postdoc is that they will go and find the ideal job for them. I like to say that their success is my success. I think that my lab is probably at steady state just now. Not because I don't have any more ideas, but because if it gets very much larger, then I feel that I wouldn't be doing my job as a mentor very well. I come to work every day with a sense of excitement because you never really know what you're going to find. That's the joy of being a scientist. <laughs>